This short film looks at cutting wheat with a scythe and a grain cradle made from hazel stick and a length of copper pipe. Lowering this string. The film shows step by step how to assemble, set up and adjust the cradle. It examines the effects of mowing style on getting the wheat to fall neatly in the windrow. And the final section looks at gathering the cut wheat. The cradle uses a length of chain held in place with a de-shackle. The hazel stick is put in between the chain and pulled tight. The top arm can be moved forwards and backwards by moving the position of the chain as it grips the snap. The height can be adjusted by lengthening and lowering this string. The angle of the arm can be altered by using a wedge on the lower grip. This lower arm holds the bottom of the wheat stems in place. The lower arm is made from 6mm bar held in place by two jubilee clips. The function of a top arm is not just to gather the cut wheat, but also guide it as it falls to the ground. I usually set this section of the arm level or slightly pointing towards the ground. I set a very acute hafting angle with a 65 centimeter ditch blade there is five fingers difference between the tip and the beard end of the blade. With the scythe and the mowing stance the top arm is set roughly to half the crop height. Furthermore the cradle arm is set to carry the wheat on an angle. So when you come to the end of the stroke the wheat falls down on its own. The distance between the cradle arm tip and blade tip can be altered by moving this dowel in and out. The lower the cradle arm, the longer this needs to be, and the higher the cradle arm, the shorter it needs to be. The position of this point can be altered by rotating this dowel. The screw is located on the top so it doesn't interfere with the cradle action. So to recap, the top arm is set roughly to half the crop height and positioned so it carries the wheat on an angle. And also with the tip of the cradle arm roughly four to five inches from the tip of the blade and protruding about a half an inch to an inch beyond the back of the blade or rib. Then practice mowing, altering the lay of the blade to find out if the tip is too close to you, missing the cut wheat, or too far away from you and catching in the uncut wheat. Then you can make fine adjustments to the tip of the cradle arm as necessary. With this cradle, my mowing style, which I'm always trying to improve, is more of a straight cut, as opposed to a 180 degree arc in open field mowing of grass. When finishing with a circular cut, the wheat stems tend to fall in an uncontrolled manner. Here we see the difference between a circular grass mowing technique and a cereals mowing action, which is more of a straight cut.
obviously you can only cut wheat when the foliage is dry. <clears throat> but if there's a lot of green in there, it's best not to make the bundles too tight so the air can get in and dry it out. Machines can be stoked in groups of four or six to dry and ripen for one to three weeks depending on the weather. Put some black netting on top to stop wood pigeons landing on it if they are a problem. It doesn't matter if the sheaves get rained on from time to time as they soon dry out in the sun and wet and wind. However, a period of prolonged wet weather over many days could be a problem. In wetter areas it's worthwhile making a hat for the sheaves. And the final thing to note is last year's hazel stick makes a tea for this year's harvest. Cheers.